channel it's Laura and this is grab bag challenge time again using my scrapbook and cards today little mini kit that I get every month I am a subscriber to their little mini kit I think it's a lot of fun and it's a perfect sized grab bag for my grab bag challenge so once a month grab bag challenge with this kit this month's uh, July kit is summer themed which of course makes sense it's July and so here is what we have. So of course, first thing, get this lovely little card. Every summer has its own story, which is fantastic. And that lists for you everything, well not everything, but most of what's in the kit, at least the generally the two collections it's based on. So if you want to pause the video and read that, you absolutely can. But I'm probably gonna be able to point out to you mostly what's from each collection. So the two collections it's based on is the Doodlebug Sweet Summer Collection and the Pink Fresh Studio Simple and Sweet. But there is a few things from other places. So first up we have this 6x12 sticker sheet. This is from the Doodlebug Collection. Can you look at that? Look at all the cute little things. Oh my goodness, so many fun things. So I love, love, love that. We've got, oh, we've got a Tailored Expressions embossing folder. So that's fun. I do have an embossing machine, so I can use that. Very excited about that. We've got some L Studio Jane alphabet stickers in white. Got numbers, letters. We've got some Doodle Pops from that Doodle Bug collection. Oops, it got stuck together. Here we go. It's got some little drinks and uh, lemons and limes. We've got some simple and sweet puffy stickers. Those are really cute. There we go. All right. And then we've got an acrylic piece that says summer. And lots of little ephemera pieces, but let's look at the paper first. We've got this is from the Doodlebug collection for sure. <laughs> So that's really cute. Then this one as well, little rainbow. Got, oh, you know what, I forgot, they're two-sided. So orange on the side, got little flowers on the side, got little drinks and yellow stripe. Some little summer icons and bold green. Got a plaid with some strips, border strips. Got some polka dots, love a polka dot, and a stripe, very nice. These are from the Simple and Sweet collection from Pink Fresh. Have these cute little framed label type things, might be fun to fussy cut those out. That's a really pretty little aqua on the other side. Got these lemons, and this beautiful stripe on this side. Got some lemons, eh, yes, this will be the side I'm using. <laughs> We've got this gorgeous paper. Oh, I am so, I ordered a Secret Not Secret Kit Club kit with this collection and I'm really hoping I get this paper. It's just so pretty. With this design on the back. And then we have two pieces of cardstock. Let's see. It says raspberry and tan, It says raspberry and tangerine cardstock from the Doodlebug design. That's right, they have matching cardstock for Doodlebug uh, collections. I forgot about that. So that's fun. I like to use cardstock. So, what else do we have here? We also have some simple and sweet enamel dots and a beautiful teal. We have some simple and sweet uh, enamel circles. Got some ephemera pieces from the Simple and Sweet. You can tell a big difference between these two kits. Even though their colors are similar, the tone is very, very different. So these, I believe, are all Simple and Sweet. Well, maybe not. You know, it's kind of hard to tell. If any of this is from Doodlebug, I don't know. So we've got lots of little labels. We've got this one here and that one heart and a little drink. So, 
says the ephemera. All the ephemera is from Pinkfresh Studio. Okay, so that's good to know. And this is my little kit that I'm going to be playing with for the grab bag challenge number 11. <laughs> okay, let's start with the process video. I have two really sweet pictures of my twins, and they are wearing a onesie that says Grandma Sweethearts. And then, of course, I have a picture of my beautiful mother holding the twins, wearing the onesies with Grandma Sweethearts on them. Thought that would be really, really cute and have to scrapbook it. Of course I did. So I'm just going to back these with some white cardstock first and then we'll dive into the goodies in this scrapbook kit, this little grab bag. Now this uh, SCT stands for Scrapbook and Cards Today. It's a sampler kit. So what they do is they take two collections that kind of go together, usually have a similar color scheme, and kind of mash them together. And you get little bits and pieces of the papers, of some of the ephemera, of stickers, etc. And then they toss in some other little goodies for you to try out as well. And one of the reasons I really like this for my grab bag challenge is Sometimes those collections go well, really well together, and sometimes those collections don't. <laughs> At least as far as using them both on the same layout. So that is part of the challenge. Another part of the challenge is I only have six by six papers. I don't have any larger pieces of paper to work with. And I am usually doing a little bit of minimalist papering on these layouts, but this one I decided to go big or go home. I had seen a fantastic sketch, which I will put at the end, of a layout with strips of paper, rounded corners at each end, so of course I did that as well, and then a banner across the center and two photos. And I thought, you know what, that's perfect. It was in my brain, I had just seen it on Pinterest, and I thought that is the perfect sketch for these two photos, let's give it a go. And because that banner covers the place where the two six by six papers meet, it looks like full size 12 by, I think they're two inch strips, two and a half inch strips, something like that. And uh, it worked out quite nicely. So we're just going to do that. We're just going to put things all together here. And I wanted to use as much of the yellow and orange as I could on this layout because I wasn't sure what other photos I was going to be using on the future layouts to finish off this little kit. And these photos have a lot of yellow and orange. Another great thing is this beautiful lemon paper, lemon slice paper from the Pink Fresh collection actually looks just like the flowers on my twins' pants, which I thought, brilliant, these are just the perfect photos for <laughs> this layout. Now, as you can expect, in using so much of my paper at the beginning, I do have to get a bit crafty to finish off this kit at the end, but I figure it out and you'll see how. So I'm getting a little bit layered with this paper, trying to stretch it so that it can mat both photos because it is just one six by six piece of paper, but I want the photos to be matted in the same paper. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting it down and kind of paper piecing it around the outside of the photo. I do this rather frequently when I really want to use a paper, but I don't have a lot of it, as so I'll just cut strips and paper piece it around the outside. Looks like a full photo mat, but it's not. <laughs> a little trick there if you uh, haven't tried that. That's a great way to use up scraps as well. So I'm just going to paper piece that together and then get these two photos uh, set up onto my layout. Now I do cut out a lot of the copying and pasting. Copying? How about just pasting and taping and things like that? Cutting and pasting is what I was trying to say. Uh, so just thought that was something you should know. I do cut that out because uh, it makes for a very long video. <laughs> so I'm going to add some adhesive foam to a couple of these uh, ephemera pieces so that they have a little bit of lift over the photos and pop up off of that very busy background. Now I love a busy background. I don't mind it at all. Pattern paper mixing has never really been an issue for me once I got started doing it. 
Um, once it became a thing and I started doing it, I can do that. And one of the secrets that I have just learned from pattern paper mixing is that there are some patterns that read as solids, as in they only have one main color. So in all of these pattern papers in the background, they have one main color and then white, and they read as solids. So they don't appear quite as busy as a pattern paper that has multiple colors in it. Another thing to think about when you're mixing pattern papers is the size of the pattern. So having some patterns that are simple, like stripes, mixed with patterns that are super busy, like that floral paper there, work well together. But having a lot of busy patterns together sometimes compete with each other. So lots of practice will definitely make that easier for you to do too. I am gonna add some of these little flowers from the Doodlebug sticker sheet. This sticker sheet was the trickiest part of the whole kit for me because it's very cartoonish. <laughs> That's not my style, but I used it. All right, grab these Paige Evans. I think this is from the, it's one of those good collections that I really, really like. I think. And I'm just gonna spell out grandma, which luckily I had the letters for. I love the colors in these thickers, though I don't normally go for a mixed color thicker, just because they're sometimes tricky to use. But it worked in this one. It had the yellow, it had the pink, it had some orange, orange-ish, <laughs> and a little bit of black. So it worked out quite nicely for this title. And I am going to off camera glue those down because chipboard I find never sticks. And this is very old chipboard that I've had for several months. And it was probably older than that when I bought it. Okay, the majority of the layout is in place. And I'm just gonna add a couple of little detail pieces. I grabbed the uh, orange slices off of the Doodle Pop sticker sheet and a couple of the puffy stickers just kind of tucked in there as well. And this is just about done. I think there's just some minor embellishing left to do, but I really, really enjoyed playing with this kit. I think you'll be excited to see how I used so much of this bright, summery paper, summery colors on some layouts that aren't actually summery. <laughs> some of them are, but some of them are not. So I hope that you will uh, check those out at, after this process video. I'll show you all of the layouts that I made and what's left. And I hope you enjoy this fantastic grab bag challenge. This is my 11th video. If you enjoy this style, please check out the playlist on my channel. I have 10 more just like it with an unboxing, a process video, and a killer kit all mixed in together. I just want to mention to you, I do have a scrapbooking group that is called Scrapbook All the Pictures. I think is what it says. <laughs> <laughs> and I do post in there fairly frequently and I ask others to please share their projects with me as well. I am going to have some monthly challenges going on in there. The current one for July is to use stars on a layout. And I would love to see your take on that challenge. So please come and share with me in the group and you could win a little prize. Now we're gonna finish up this layout. I have some Tim Holtz Tiny Word stickers sitting on my desk and decided I needed just a little bit more black on the page. And I also wanted to add kind of a look of journaling because that is, uh, paper strips is what was in the sketch. And I did want to include that detail as well. So that will do it for this layout. Thank you so much for joining me, guys, and stay tuned for the Killikit portion of this grab bag challenge video. What's left of my grab bag challenge? Not a whole lot here, but a little bit. I've got, of course, the embossing folder. I did end up using this on one of the layouts. I really like that. And I have, of course, some of the alphabets left. I did use some of them. I uh, did some white on white, white titles, which I don't normally do, but I thought I would try that out. Uh, from the papers, all I have left are a couple of scraps. None of them are even big enough for a 3 by 4 card, so that's where I stopped. For the Doodlebug stickers, I used a lot of them, but as you'll see, I, I cheated a little. <laughs> Oh goodness, I used them to make a bit of a sticker sneeze layout just to get them used up. 
most of what you see is left is those drinks and a couple of things that I just felt like didn't go on a kid's layout maybe so there's that and then uh, we have one journaling spot that just didn't find a place it's kind of large and then all that's left of the ephemera and puppy stickers are drinks so <laughs> <laughs> I will either figure out a layout to put these on or pass them on to a friend who can possibly use them. So that's what's left of my grab bag challenge. Here are the layouts. Now to start with, of course, this is the layout that you saw me make and just did some pattern paper background here. And I really wanted to challenge myself because I normally do minimalist paper because you don't have a lot of paper. So I thought, what if I made one layout that had a lot of paper on it, and then see if I can make myself do more with minimal paper. So this one had the maximum paper, and then I did this, let me show them to you in order. I did a couple of six by 12 layouts because they're just easier for me when I have less paper. And this one is Sock Puppet Theater. There's title white on white there using mostly the Doodlebug collection. Some flags down here. And then the next one, and again, that, that embossing folder was beautiful. Here's that sticker sneeze layout. Uh, so in this one, instead of using pattern paper for the background, I just put the stickers everywhere. And then I just treated it like a pattern paper background. Even got a couple of enamel shapes on there from my stash in that lime green, oh my. Um, <laughs> got that acrylic shape, a little bit of the paper here, uh, just to kind of treat it, that background as pattern paper. So that's number three. And this is the last one where I literally used the scraps, the tiniest scraps up here at the top. And then one full six by six page that I had left and loved this paper. So I had to use that kind of as a focal background situation. And uh, just toss some enamel dots and shapes and whatever was left of the ephemera on here. So that is it for this grab bag challenge. Let me know in the comments below how you think I did. And is there a grab bag that you would like to see me try? I have tried quite a few. If you look back, this is number 11. But let me know if you come across a grab bag you would like for me to try. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Until next time, bye.